In this tutorial, we will look at two different methods for how to plug everything in when you DJ with live. There are a number of different ways that you can go about this, so you need to choose the setup that's best for you. The first option uses live through a standard DJ mixer, and the second option uses live's built-in queuing system. Conventionally, one of the most important things that a DJ requires is the ability to be able to preview the next track through headphones without the audience being able to hear it. To be able to do this, you need a sound card or audio interface with multiple outputs. If you already have this, you're ready to go. However, if you don't, at the end of this tutorial, there is a workaround solution so that you can begin using live with just a stereo output from your sound card. The first thing we need to do is make sure that all the outputs you require are turned on. Go to Preferences and the Audio tab, and then choose Output Configuration. Turn on each stereo output that you want available and then click OK. Remember though that you're limited by the number physically available on your sound card. OK, so here's method one. If you're a DJ who is used to using a standard DJ mixer, then the most intuitive way to use live is to set it up so that you can continue using your analog mixer as normal. To do this, connect the output from channels one and two on your sound card to the line input on the left hand side of your mixer. And then connect outputs 3 and 4 to the right hand side of your mixer. If you have more than two stereo outputs available, you can connect the extra outputs to any further channels on the mixer. Depending on what sound card you have, you may find that your outputs are headphone jacks and your inputs to the DJ mixer have a phono connection. If this is the case, you'll need to buy 3.5mm jack to phono cables and then connect in the same way. OK, that's the physical connections done. Now you need to set the outputs correctly within Live. Firstly, make sure that you have two audio tracks open. These will be the equivalent of your left and right hand record decks. Then select the I.O. button to open the In Out section. On the left track, change the Audio 2 setting to External Out, and underneath select Channels 1 and 2. Now do the same on the right track, choosing External Out and Channels 3 and 4. If you've connected additional channels to your DJ mixer, you can open another audio track and set this to outputs 5 and 6. Now let's see this in action. When I press play on the left hand track, it plays through the left channel on my mixer. And when I press play on the right hand track, it comes through the right channel. I can use my volume controls, gains, EQ, and the crossfader to fade between each track. This means that I can now mix in exactly the same way that a standard DJ does when using vinyl or CDs. When I want to listen to the next track in my headphones, I can use the mixer's Q settings to decide which side to listen to. Let's do a mix and see all of this in action. method of using live is to use the inbuilt queuing system which was specifically designed with DJing in mind. First of all let's set up the physical connections. 
Connect outputs 1 and 2 on your sound card directly to your speakers. Then connect your headphones to the headphone output or to outputs 3 and 4. That's all you need to do in the way of physical connections. Next, in Live, make sure that you have two audio tracks open. Then reveal the In Out section by clicking on the I.O. icon. Set Master Out to 1 and 2 and then set Q Out to Outputs 3 and 4. Then make sure that the Audio 2 on each channel is set to Master. Finally, if you click on the Master Track Solo button, it changes live into Q mode and all the solo buttons turn into headphone cue buttons. This now means that whenever one of your cue buttons is pressed, you'll be able to hear that track through your headphones. You can adjust the cue volume that's sent to the headphones here. Live has a built-in crossfader which is designed to be used with the cue system. This is opened by clicking on the X icon here. This opens up the crossfader on the right hand side of the screen and the option to set each channel to either A on the left or B on the right. I will set deck A to A and deck B to B. Now, let's see a mix taking place. I'm going to start the first record out loud. Next, I want to get the second record ready without the audience hearing it, and so I'll press the Q button so that only I can hear it through the headphones. I'll now listen to the record playing out loud and wait for the start of a phrase to press play on the second record. Now the two records are playing together and when I'm ready I can move the crossfader into the middle so that I can hear them both out loud. When I'm ready, I can finish moving the crossfader across until the first record has fully faded out. Once I've completed the mix, I can press stop on the first track and then change the cue button to the other track so that I'm ready for the next mix. If you only currently have a single stereo output from your computer, then you can still begin using Live to DJ with, although I would recommend considering upgrading your sound card in the future. The way that you can achieve this is by splitting the output from the sound card. In Preferences, choose Audio, then select Output Config, and make sure that channels 1 and 2 are enabled as separate mono outputs. Then on the left hand track select external out and then one for the output channel and on the right hand track select external out and two for the channel. Next you need to create a cable that will split the output from the left and right channels. Firstly get a cable that goes from a headphone to a phono connection and join this to a phono to phono adapter. Then get two cables that have a single phono connection on one end and two phono connections on the other end. Once you join the two single ends to the adapter, then you'll have two pairs of phono connections that you can connect to your DJ mixer. You now have two separate channels which you can mix between. If you'd rather use the second method of mixing using Live's built-in queuing system, then you could alternatively split the outputs so that one goes into the speakers and the other goes to a set of headphones. There is a limitation to using this workaround solution, and this is that the music will now only play in mono, meaning that the left and right speaker will both play exactly the same thing. To finish off this tutorial, we will discuss some of the pros and cons of using each method of mixing. The first method is very good for DJs who are already used to using a conventional DJ mixer, and who expect to mix this way. It allows you to utilise your current mixer and means that you have a good crossfader, volume controls and EQ exactly how you're used to them. 
It's simple to integrate live with a traditional DJ setup when using this method, and you can easily mix between live and CD or vinyl. You may well still want to add a MIDI control to this setup so that you can control effects and trigger samples without having to use the computer keyboard and the mouse the whole time. The major setback of this setup is you won't be able to record your live DJ performance in live. The second method takes some time to adjust to, but does give you greater control over the sound. You can set up your controls in the way that suits you best, and you can record every detail of your mixes and performances so they can be edited, remixed and exported. There are a number of new products coming out which are specifically targeted at DJs who use live, which are making it easier to do everything you want to with just one piece of hardware. This is the end of the tutorial on physical connections. You should now be able to decide the best way to plug everything in for you.